Before we begin, I want to recognize that Turo University, California sits on land that was included in the unratified treaties of 1851 and 1852, specifically Treaty O. This unceded land belonged to the Karkin people, who were one of the eight Olone tribes in the Bay Area. Additionally, Solano County was home to members of the Patwin and Miwok people. Today, we recognize the history of the land we occupy. Now to begin, I call upon Emerald Bibbler to sing the national anthem. Please stand for the national anthem. Thank you, Emerald Bib Bibbler. Now I'd like to call upon Senior Provost she Shelley Berkeley, followed by Provost Sarah Schweitzer to bring greetings from the Turo community. Hi everyone, this is Shelley Berkeley. I'm the CEO and Senior Provost of Turo University Western Division. And as I do every Veterans Day, I am here to thank all of the veterans that are part of the Turo family, our students, our faculty and staff for stepping up and answering the call when our nation needs them the most. There is not a more selfless group of people than the veterans of our armed forces for this country who dedicate their lives and often sacrifice their lives and their families in order to protect and defend the rest of us. I am so proud to lead an institution that cares so much for its veteran students and everyone that's associated and part of the veterans family. So thank you so much for everything you have done for our country and everything you continue to do. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. My name is Sarah Schweitzer, Provost of Torah University, California. I'd like to welcome everyone to our first virtual Veterans Day celebration. I'd like to thank Kevin Calvello, DO student and TUC Military Club president for organizing today's event. It's an honor to speak about something that I hold so dearly, recognizing and honoring our veterans, the brave men and women who were willing to give of themselves to defend their brothers and sisters, our great nation, our freedom and our democracy. We come together to honor our service men and women who answered America's call. These men and women left their families, their homes and the lives that they knew to protect our country and to maintain our way of life. Veterans Day is also part of my own personal story. My grandfather served 12 tours in the Pacific aboard submarines in World War II. 
My husband served in the first Gulf War. I recognize what, what that service meant to my grandfather, my grandmother, and to future generations of my own family. Veterans Day is also a day for all Americans. It's a day to remember why countless generations of Americans have served this great nation. It is a day to be proud of who we are as Americans and commit to protecting our democracy and the many freedoms it affords us and to protect that legacy for many future generations. To our veterans, thank you. We recognize your sacrifice to protect our democracy and way of life. We are forever grateful to you. You inspire us to serve others more completely and fully. As we honor our veterans and remember their great deeds, let us also salute those who are currently serving our great nation and working to ensure our safety and security at home and abroad. Take time today to thank a veteran, an active duty military or a military family for their many sacrifices for our way of life. Thank you. Thank you, Senior Provost Berkeley and Provost Schweitzer. Next, I would like to ask the following to bring greetings. Vallejo City Councilors Pippin Du and Rosanna Verder Aliga, Assembly Member Timothy Grayson, State Senator Dodd, and Congressman Mike Thompson. Hi, I am Pippin Du, Councilwoman for the City of Vallejo. Thank you to Toro University and the students from the Military Club for putting on this event and allowing me a few moments to express our gratitude to our veterans for their service. We know our freedom and independence was earned through tremendous bravery and dedication of our veterans to our country, and some have paid for those privileges with the ultimate sacrifice. They will never be forgotten, and our freedom will never be taken for granted. Join me in honoring the great men and women who have served and continue to serve our great country. Thank you. Hello, I'm Council Member Rosanna Verder Aliga, City of Vallejo. Thank you to Toro University for asking me to give brief remarks as we celebrate Veterans Day today, November 11. Today is Veterans Day and we must recommit to honor those who have fought or are fighting for our freedom and democracy. It is also a reminder for each of us to help protect our way of life and also to assist our veterans and their families. The defense of freedom is not just for those in the military. Each of us share that duty and that responsibility. We don't have to join the armed forces to contribute. We can help by being vigilant at all the threats that try to erode our democracy, by studying the issues, voting on every election, and by speaking out against injustices, just like so many students here at Turo University do. We must also ensure that everyone gets the benefits of our society, and we can do that by volunteering in our communities and teaching our children and others what it really means to be an American. Thank you for inviting me to give brief remarks as we honor our veterans today. Let us continue to honor our veterans by doing our part in protecting the freedom that they fought for, and more importantly, by willingly sharing our time, talents, treasures to also improve the lives of our veterans and their families, as well as all of those less fortunate Americans. May God bless each of you, and may God continue to bless America. Thank you very much, and happy Veterans Day. Hi, I'm Assemblymember Tim Grayson, and I'm honored to be a part of today's ceremony. Thank you, Toro University and Toro Military Club, for organizing today's event, acknowledging the incredible value of our veterans and active duty service members. To every veteran, active duty service member, and your families, thank you for your many sacrifices. The events of this year have highlighted how often we take for granted the freedoms, liberties, and unity that we have as a nation. We enjoy the benefits of your sacrifices every day, and I'm honored to extend my gratitude and the gratitude of the 14th Assembly District onto you and the loved ones who support you. 
I would like to encourage everyone to take their gratitude a step further and to not only verbalize thanks to service members and veterans in our communities, but to also take full advantage of the freedoms we are guaranteed through their service. During these difficult times brought on by the pandemic, I urge everyone to remember that these brave women and men made sacrifices for the United States of America and that we are much stronger when we stand together. Please stay safe and care one for another. God bless you. Hi, I'm Senator Bill Dodd. Today we recognize all veterans and thank you for your service. Veterans Day first began as a day to celebrate peace, the armistice of World War I in an uncertain time. It was a moment of national unity in an era when that was sorely needed. Our troops were overseas far from home and the entire world was battling a deadly pandemic. America was divided along partisan lines right after an election. But just like that, the first day 102 years ago, this day is our opportunity as a nation for reflection. It's an opportunity for all Americans to unite in appreciation of the ultimate public servants, the people willing to sacrifice everything to protect what they have sworn to defend. Moments when we can set aside differences and work towards a common goal. That's when we see the greatness that America has never lost. So today, act on that greatness and volunteer for a local veterans group contribute to a charity that helps veterans. At the very least, find a veteran in your family or community and just give them a simple thanks. We as a nation must always be grateful for their service. Thank you and happy Veterans Day. Hi, I'm Congressman Mike Thompson. I'm your representative in Congress and an Army veteran. I served in Vietnam with the 173rd Airborne Brigade. Today on Veterans Day, we have a chance to pay tribute to our nation's veterans and to their families. Throughout our history, great men and women have chosen to serve our nation in the military. They left home, their families, and loved ones and sacrificed to protect our nation, demonstrating the best our nation has to offer. We're in awe of their courage and their sacrifice. To our veterans here in our district, and across our nation, thank you. To all the family members of veterans, thank you. We are forever in your debt. While Veterans Day is a federal holiday, thank you for recognizing that it is much more. For those in the service today, it's another day in uniform, maybe in harm's way and often far from their family. For our veterans, it can be a reminder of the hardships of combat and the values that made them put on the uniform in the first place. For our military families, it can be a day of sadness and fear, wondering when their loved one will be home and be home safely. Today is a reminder of our duty to lighten the burden for our service members, their families, and our veterans. Earlier this year, I had the honor of serving as Vice Chairman of the Eisenhower Memorial Commission in Washington, D.C. I had a lot of time to think about the service of President Eisenhower, one of our nation's great veterans. In his second inaugural address, Eisenhower said, quote, the building of such a peace is a bold and solemn purpose. To proclaim it is easy, to serve it will be hard, and to attain it, we must be aware of its full meaning and ready to pay its full price. Today, we remember those veterans who have paid the full price of building peace. We must all commit to working for our veterans to make sure they receive the benefits they earned. More than 9 million veterans enrolled in the VA healthcare system last year alone. Veterans need access to health care when they come home. That's why I am 100% opposed to the privatizing of the VA and sponsored a resolution last year in strong support of a fully funded and staffed Veterans Health Administration. 
Veterans who may have been exposed to Ag Agent Orange or other toxins released by burn pits must have access to compensation and health care. That's why I sponsored the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act, which was signed into law last year. This bill ensures that those exposed to Agent Orange while serving in the territorial waters off the coast of Vietnam can be eligible for care. We also need to make sure veterans can get a job when they leave the service. That's why I co-sponsored legislation to help disabled veterans find employment opportunities. There were more than 900,000 VA education beneficiaries last year alone. Know that this is not the end of our work in Congress to serve our veterans. You have given a deep sacrifice for our nation and we will do everything we can to serve you in return. Our service members, our veterans, put on the uniform in hopes that their children and grandchildren will never have to do the same. As we work to repay our debt of gratitude to them, we must also work for a world where no other man or woman must make such sacrifice. That means working for peace in order to fully honor the sacrifice of our veterans. As President John Kennedy said, and as every combat veteran knows, quote, mankind must put an end to war or war will put an end to mankind, end quote. In his honor, in your honor, and in honor of all of our veterans, I remain committed to peace. We must live up to President Eisenhower and President Kennedy's call for peace. We have work left to do, but as we stand together today, we know there is a brighter future ahead. Thank you and God bless America. Thank you for those greetings. Next, I would like to ask Dr. Michael Barber, a faculty member in the College of Education and Health Science, and also an associate member of the Royal Canadian Legion to read the poem, In Lander's Field. This will be followed by Dr. Joy Dugan, the faculty advisor for our military club, who will introduce our guest speaker for today. John McCrae was 22 years old when he decided to enter medical school. When the South African War began during one of his fellowships, he decided to take a leave from his studies to serve in the artillery. Following his service, he returned to complete his fellowship and began practicing medicine. When World War I began, at the age of 42, McCrae volunteered to serve once again. It was in the trenches during the Second Battle of Ypres in 1915 that he penned his famous poem in Flanders Field. McCrae died before the end of the war. However, two years later, the American Legion, inspired by his poem, was the first to adopt the poppy as their symbol of remembrance. Now, In Flanders Field by John McCrae. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies blow in Flanders Field. Happy Veterans Day. My name is Joy Moverly. I'm an Army veteran and military club advisor at Toro University. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome Captain Cassandra Meredith of the 1st of the 184th Infantry, California Army National Guard. She's the Behavioral Health Officer and she's going to be talking with us about resiliency. Hello, my name is Cassandra Meredith and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I'm honored to spend Veterans Day with you all and talk about one of my favorite topics, resiliency. 
7% of the U.S. population identifies as a veteran or has served in the military. Um, so chances are you have either served or you love someone that serves or as a provider, you will serve someone that serves. So thank you for your, your service. Okay, so a little bit about me. I have served in the Army for 12 years, um, both as enlisted and also as an officer. Um, I was active duty for the California Army National Guard for eight years. Um, I am a behavioral health officer there. Um, I served as one of the full-time behavioral health officers and focused on crisis intervention and resource referral. Um, and then I became the resiliency, risk reduction, and suicide prevention officer in charge for the state. Um, we focused on interventions and we focused on education, um, you know, working with our, our service members to teach them different tools to become more resilient um, and also on how to handle different crisis situations. Um, I currently work at the VA now. Um, but I still am a reservist and I currently serve in a infantry unit. So in this picture here, that's me giving a, an IV to one of my medics during a field exercise. Um, and it's just a reminder that uh, BHO should probably stick to talking and you guys as providers should probably stick to the, the sticking. Um, so moving on, what do we know about resilience? So the American Psychological Association defines resilience as the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or even significant resources, uh, sources of threat. So the main highlight there is adapting. Um, so resilience has a lot to do with adapting well. What we know about resilience is some people are born with it. Um, so it could be a biological trait. Some people are just more resilient than others. Um, the other piece of it is skills can be taught. Um, so someone can become more resilient through the experiences that they have or self-improvement through education. So service members are taught to be adaptable. Um, when I was a young officer, a senior leader told me to grow where I was planted and to find comfort in being uncomfortable. Oftentimes, we are presented with challenges or, or unideal situations, and the only option for us is to grow. Um, in the military, we're often put into stressful situations, and we're expected to adapt. That's all we can do is again, grow where you are planted and to adapt and overcome stressful situations. Um, leadership development. If you are a non-commissioned officer or if you are an officer in the military, you often go through months of leadership training. Why is this important? Because it's important that um, our service members have buy-in into the organization um, because it gives them a sense of accomplishment. So people are taught leadership development in the military and they are able to lead other soldiers, which again brings them a sense of accomplishment. Core values. Um, so I'm Army and I will talk about the Army core values, um, but in the Army, our core values are leadership, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. Having a sense of values greater than yourself gives you something to fall back on um, in terms of adversity. How to overcome challenges. So service members are often given challenging missions um, and quitting really isn't an option. We are forced to find situations, um, or I'm sorry, we are forced to find solutions in every situation that we are put in um, and to have that mental agility to come up with different solutions to those challenges. Oftentimes when we go through the planning process, we have different courses of action um, for every situation that we are, we are put in. Again, just like being adaptable, we're not able to quit. Um, another thing that the military does is we build strong relationships. So 
Having social support and depending on others is so important when we talk about resilience. In the military, it is essential to lean on your battle buddies. Having a sense of social support is so important. Um, again, when there's any type of adversity that we go through and just leaning on, on each other is um, important. So the resiliency courses, as I mentioned, I used to run the resiliency program for the California National Guard and in the Army, um, we actually teach resiliency to our service members. Um, so we are able to, a, a lot of times we use cognitive behavioral therapy and also positive um, psychology to increase our resiliency um, capabilities with, within our service members. Every branch of service also has resiliency um, courses. So why is this important as providers? So as providers, we can focus on a strengths-based approach for wellness. Um, and so as a provider, if you know that someone is a, a veteran, um, you can always tell them like, hey, you made it through basic training, you can make it through treatment. Um, so understanding risk factors in a population um, is also just as important as understanding protective factors or strengths. So having cultural competence when working with the military population is really important. Um, building rapport with clients to improve uh, to improve care. So finding ways to, to build rapport with patients often improves treatment outcomes. So connecting with someone through similar experiences, thanking someone for their service, um, or you know, talking to them about similar duty, duty stations really improves um, the care for an individual. Um, and lastly, I think it's important to look at the veteran community through a lens of strength and resiliency um, rather than a population that has suffered. People are resilient when you look for resiliency. So on that, I just wanted to again, thank you all and have a happy Veterans Day. Thank you, Captain Meredith. Next, I would like to call upon my fellow members of the military club. Felipe Cateches, Jacob Spinelli, Leo Minasayan, and Kylie Shakur to tell us about the fallen soldier table. Before we begin, we'd like to extend a special thank you to Renee Morris and Chef Raymond Naughty for putting the fallen soldier's table together. The fallen soldier's table, a revision of the original poem by John F. M. Nelson. The table set for one is small, symbolizing the loneliness we feel without. The tablecloth is white, representing the purity of their intentions and willingness to respond to their country's call to arms. The red rose stands for the family with faith and love for those who serve. They're held with the highest respect for that's what they deserve. A yellow ribbon is for the loyalty waiting for those serving abroad as we pray that they're watched over. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of the bitter fate. There is salt upon the bread plate too, symbol, symbolic of the river of tears shed by families and loved ones. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us this night. The red candle stands tall for the love of country that inspired the service members to serve the country. It holds a place of honor. The Torah placed to the right side of the table. It represents the spiritual strength and faith to sustain the lost. The empty chair symbolizes the missing comrade who isn't here. Now it stands alone for the voice that we can't hear. Thank you. Thank you, Felipe, Jacob, Leo, and Kylie. Next, I would like to call upon Rabbi Tannenbaum to say a few words in remembrance, which will be followed by a moment of silence and the playing of the taps by the U.S. Air Force Band of the Golden West. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. God in heaven, 
Master of the world, we stand here before you in prayer as we honor our veterans today on Veterans Day, appropriately marked by the flag over this former Navy base and military hospital. Look favorably upon the honorable guests and dignitaries representing Tour University and the great state of California, and all those who have joined today for this momentous and special occasion. Today we see the flag. On the flag we have 50 individual stars. These are not stars that divide. They are stars that unite. They single out individual uniqueness and contribution. When all 50 are truly united, only then do we achieve e pluribus unum. Out of many, one. Bless the efforts of our dear veterans defending these United States and for protecting this land and its allies from war and destruction. May he who makes peace in heaven bestow peace upon us and all of his children. May the prophecy of Isaiah be fulfilled as stated. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. May our nation serve as a beacon of light for all people and achieve the goal so powerfully stated in our Pledge of Allegiance, that America truly be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States of America. As I conclude, I would ask for a moment of silence to reflect on those veterans that we have lost during recently, and specifically, to remember Robert, known as Bob Mullins, a veteran of the US Army and a member of Toro University, California community. We lost only a few short months ago. And all the POWs and the MIAs, and especially those who gave all for this country. Amen. Thank you. This brings us to the end of our service today. However, before we conclude, I would like to once again thank Emerald Bibbler for singing the national anthem. I'd also like to thank, thank Provost Berkeley and Schweitzer and Rabbi Tannenbaum, as well as Councilwoman Du and Verder Alika, Assembly Member Grayson, Senator, State Senator Dodd, and Congressman Thompson for their remarks. We are especially grateful for the inspirational words from Captain Cassandra Meredith, a special thanks to the U.S. Air Force Band of the Golden West for their rendition of TAPS. 
A big thank you to Renee Morris and Chef Nadi for the Fallen Soldiers Table. Andrea Garcia for the many contacts and outreach that she undertook, as well as everyone on the Advancement and Communications team for their outreach and marketing. Last but not least, I would like to extend a sincere thank you to all of those who participated in our service or were involved with the planning and execution of this service altogether. Finally, I'd like to make a pitch to the fellow students of Torah University to join our military club. We got a lot of events planned um, next semester, just community outreach programs, uh, as well as informational sessions on dif the different pathways there are available um, for health professions in the military. So if you're interested, uh, let us know. Thank you.